Eh, I'm the fellow in Wikidata and Open Data from Wikimedistas de Uruguay. Eh, so I'm kind of uh, your host today as well. Um, and uh, Silesh from the education team here. I'm, I'm Silesh. I work with the Wikimedia Foundation and Community Programs team. And very excited to be here uh, and you know present this with Nat today and see like how can we you know expand this project in the region beyond Uruguay and you know connect with all of you and see the, the you know the work that we can achieve together. Great. Well, uh, Wikidata for Education, you know, the, the, the explanation for that, aligning the sum of all knowledge with school curricula. And that's what we have been trying to do here. Uh, I don't know uh, if some of you are not familiar with Wikidata yet, after yesterday and today's sessions. Everyone is familiar with Wikidata. Okay. Just to like give a basic summary, like for the sake of the internet, that also someone else may may see this. Uh, Wikidata is a free open knowledge database. It's like a sister to Wikipedia, but like its uh, core, its uh, purpose is to store uh, data, um, like structured linked uh, information, and that's readable both by hum humans and machines. And the way uh, that things uh, are, uh, that data is uh, stored in Wikidata is that you can make uh, links between uh, different items. Like for example, for this uh, soccer player, you can uh, state the property uh, that he is a citizen of and the country, Ghana. I wanted to change that uh, to Luis Suarez, like to uh, uh, speak about Uruguay, but I didn't have time, so <laughs> sorry. But you all know Wikidata, so we can just keep going. And as you know, um, you can also uh, get uh, things like this, uh, lists. You can uh, ask for queries. This I wouldn't be able to translate to Uruguay because we have no mountains, but I will have done something different. Uh, you could get, for example, a list of mountains of every item that is identified by this uh, number all mountains that uh, are in the country Ghana and you can generate with that query things like uh, amazing things like visualizations that the Wikidata query builder makes very quickly for you like this map. But uh, a problem that was identified uh, by this project and the reason that this project uh, Wikidata for Education exists now is that uh, we couldn't make queries like this. Uh, trying to find out the curriculum topics that were uh, um, supposed to be taught in a specific country, in the national school, school curriculum for a specific country, that was something that we could not query. The curriculum topics were not structured um, and were not available uh, specifically in Wikidata. Um, so, well, th that's that's a question that Wikidata for Education uh, comes to comes to treat and to resolve. Uh, I don't know if uh, you are familiar with your own country's uh, school curriculums, but these school curriculums are usually published in a format that is uh, most likely a PDF, something that the education authorities of, of each country. Uh, get together and see, okay, uh, in this subject for this year, for this grade, we are going to give this and this and these topics, we are going to teach this at school, but uh, then uh, that is published in an unstructured way, in a PDF format, for example. So, uh, I will just give you like a brief overview of like what is Wikidata for Education project. So it was not a long time back where we were all wearing masks, staying at our home. But it was not just us. You know, 1.3 uh, billion students were also out of school. And our infrastructure was not prepared enough to like, you know, support the online learning for the students, you know, when the pandemic happened. And one of the, stru one of the struggle for Wikipedia was also there that we don't know what are the, you know, uh, Wikipedia articles that are part of the school curriculum or something like that. Um, so this project started as a, with an initiative of like to explore of uh, 
proof of concept to see whether you know the platforms that we have, the amazing power of Wikidata that we have, could be something that we could use to you know make this alignment, connect the school, or the school curriculum with our Wikipedia projects, and make the largest open educational resource available for the students to be like more accessible, to be more usable by them. So uh, we joined, uh, so during the pandemic, uh, UNESCO started a, a global coalition for education. So this, this is where like we were part of the global coalition for education. And uh, one of the priority area for UNESCO at that time was in Ghana. So they wanted to like, uh, so the, the, their core goal was to uh, digitize curriculums for like uh, sub-Saharan African countries. And you know, it's very funny when it comes to like digitization. So uh, I come from a region uh, of the world where digitization means there's a book, I scan it, make a PDF copy, distribute it to the teachers and it's a digitization. But does it work, you know? <laughs> Like, uh, and often the curriculum uh, that are like being published are published in like, as Nat mentioned, are in the PDF, cop PDF uh, based, and they're like very text reached, you know. Curriculums have never been made or based of like, you know, data oriented. So one of the struggles that we had to do when, while we started this project was to see how a text based curriculum could be transferred into like a data oriented curriculum. So we went through like multiple uh, processes, and uh, you know we we acquired the curriculum from Ghana's Ministry of Education. We did like a couple of consultations with our Wikidata experts, with our community members, with data experts, with education experts to see whether the project that we are trying to do is a is visible or not. Is Wikidata the right platform to uh, you know? Uh, structure curricular data to use, um, you know, to align it with the Wikipedia articles. And we received like a good result from the consultation. So many folks were saying that yes, you know, as many things that Wikidata is doing uh, and the power that Wikip Wikidata has, one of the power could be used to like, you know, structuring the curricular data and, you know, aligning it with school curriculums. Because, you know, once you're aligning the uh, school curriculum with Wikidata, you can also connect it with like Wikisource or another uh, external open educational resources as well. So uh, when we started the project, we saw that there were many properties that were missing. We didn't know like how the curriculum structure could look like. We didn't know like how to, uh, how to establish a model and how the model should look like for a curriculum, which is like a very text reach. Um, Okay, I'll come back to this. Maybe you can go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we did like, you know, this data collection there. We did a case study of like multiple curriculum. So one of the interesting things that happened is that this project was piloted by two uh, organizations in Ghana, Open Foundation West Africa and Wikimedia Ghana. So uh, w we had an amazing uh, techn technical advisor, Sukena. Sukena, she did like a case, like, you know, comparison between like different curriculums around the world. She did with like Malta, Morocco, Ghana, uh, and to see like, you know, what are the patterns that the common patterns we are seeing. And after that, you know, like we created a data model. I'll go to the data model in the next slide. Yeah, this is like the data model, which is, kind of complex, but in, when it comes to Wikidata, it's like very simple, you know? You have like a parent item, and every country's parent item is like a, a national curriculum of Ghana, national curriculum of Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, anything could be like, because every country publishes its national curriculum, you know? And it's further goes to like, okay, now you have a parent item of a national curriculum, but it also goes to like national cu curriculum for high school, for primary school, for secondary school. Then it goes to another level of like by grade or by topics. So this is like how the granularity that we have gone through. We have gone through like the first stage is a parent item, the second stage is the high school level. Uh, sorry, the high school, the second, uh, third stage is the grade in the high school, and then the topic and different things that are part of the topic, you know, like the curric particular curriculum topics that are there. Okay, so um, I, 
I mean, now you can take over like how the Uruguay's experience was. There. I I want, uh, in fact, like to know. I think maybe we, uh, or, or at least I was going too fast with this, but I don't know uh, if everyone in the room like understood like uh, or or has a sense of what's our goal in digitizing curriculum data. What? Why do you think we or? Well, I join the team later, but why, why do you think this initiative was uh, important or why did we think of Wikidata as a good place to store curriculum data? That's a question for, 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 for you. Why do you think Wikidata w would be, or maybe, or maybe you disagree, wh why do you think it would be a good place to store curriculum data? You want to give us an answer? No? Anyone? I think that, that it's because we need to make accessible that information. Um, like in Uruguay, I don't know in the rest of the countries, but in Argentina, uh, accessing to the curricula, it's very difficult if you are not a teacher <laughs> or if you are in, working in the education field. So I think that if it is in Wikidata, you can, I don't know, cross information, make, look, I don't know, compare w with other curriculas, areas. I think that it's more accessible for everyone, not only for teachers. Do you want to say something, Renata? <laughs> Once you integrate curriculum with the wiki data, so as she mentioned, it's easy to you know compare and contrast with other curriculum of the world or the same country. Uh, what are the things the other people are learning? What is we are learning? We can understand the gap, and we can fill that. And what is our level? This all is possible if you are integrating with Wikidata. Yes, that's one of the use cases we wanted to mention. Anyone else? Any other ideas? Rana? No. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I think, um, yeah, well, uh, knowledge gaps, yeah, it, it was wh one of the answers was in the, in the slide. But uh, what I wanted to mention is I recently learned that there is like this uh, rating of uh, open data, like from one star to five stars. And I was very amazed that what we did in Ghana, in Uruguay, and now also in Italy, was uh, to translate something that was a one star a open data file or a one star a open data a database that is uh, the curriculum topics uh, uh, the curricula as it is published by the by the governments by the states like a, like a pdf that you can reuse probably it's all uh, licenses for you to read and reuse and distribute but it's not structured and we brought it to a five star uh, database a five star way of sharing open data that is wikidata because now uh, we can query it we can uh, build things on top of that you have a unique URI that links to every item in the um, in the database uh, you can do many more things now with this information that is uh, like vital in, 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 many, in many senses. And in Uruguay particularly, we had like, um, la last year we, we had, uh, and now we are going uh, through a process of, uh, the government is changing many of the things, uh, the, the way uh, um, the school curriculum in general, like trying to eliminate some of the subjects and trying to make some subjects uh, non mandatory anymore. And I think it would have been very useful for us to have like a, a simple tool to compare the old curriculum to this one because um, it's something that is very important politically and that I trust like the opinions of um, the activists who were uh, trying to, to take a position on that. But also with data, we could uh, um, back up those, uh, those claims. We could say, okay, this topic and this topic, uh, that seem very important, like for example, um, prehistory, like I don't know how you say prehistoria in, in English, but the history of humanity before a written a word, that's no longer in the official curriculum in history. And if we have the old curriculum structure, that's something that just with one query, with one table that compares one thing and another, we could say, okay, all these topics, we are losing them, or maybe these are, we are gaining. Uh, and we could have information like to exercise our rights as, as citizens uh, because the, the, um, the mandatory education, uh, mostly in public schools, ends up affecting all of us. 
And I don't know if we would like to take a look at the use cases, the queries, or? Yeah, maybe we can show like one or two queries. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we also found that, um, especially for like English Wikipedia, you need like a certain reading skills to like, you know, have, you know, read through the articles, you know. And sometimes, you know, English Wikipedia, the articles are written in a such a different point of view, you know. And the things that you, your government or your, your education system wants you to learn often misses, you know, in these Wikipedias as well. So, for example, there could be like an, I was talking to Nat yesterday that, you know, there could be like an independence movement in like uh, freedom, freedom movement in like Uruguay and there are like certain objectives, learning objectives that students sh should learn. Now you can also like compare that, that, you know, these are the learning objectives that the students should learn, but uh, is it the thing that is existing in the Spanish Wikipedia? Is it something missing? So you can also use the campaign side of a project, you know, like bridge that knowledge gap. But it is not just about like, you know, adding those more content to the Wikipedia articles. But for example, you know, like uh, when we did this project with Ghana, Ghana is a multilingual country. So uh, even though they have like an official language as English, they are like uh, languages such as Chui and Dagbani, which has like more than like two million speakers. And one of the interesting thing that we did, can, can, I, can you run one query from the previous slide? Previous slide. Yeah. So the English one, yes. <coughs> so this query actually enables you to like go to Wikidata and ask like, give me a list of all the Wikipedia articles that are part of Kana's, let's say like eighth grade uh, social studies curriculum. So one thing that you can notice that when you're looking for the result, because this is linked to English Wikipedia, you're getting like 54 articles on English Wikipedia that we have matched with like Ghana's curriculum topics for, 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 for that particular grade. So, you know, this is interesting. You can curate a list, you know, you can also curate, like I said, like the learning objectives, something like that. But now you're gonna go a bit up uh, and maybe, yeah, maybe change the language from English, E-N to Chui, T-W, yes. So Chui, as I said, is a language that is spoken in Ghana by two million speakers. And so when we were doing this project, the article that we used to have for Chui Wikipedia was just two. So imagine there are 55 articles on English Wikipedia that matches with like Ghana, uh, Ghana's social studies curriculum. But when it comes to a language that is spoken in Ghana by two million speakers, and if a student wants to learn something in their own language, they don't have access to it, you know? So when we have this list, we know what are the topics of impact that we can work on, you know? And we actually did a campaign. So this was only two articles. So now it has been improved from two to 18. Uh, I mean, you know, it involves like a lot of like volunteer work and volunteer support. But uh, one of the things that we did, we did achieve to fill that knowledge gap. I mean, we haven't achieved it to do like the 54 things, but still something around it. Um, if you have like a Uruguayan query, you can show that as well. Um, do you want to talk about it? Well, this one actually doesn't show the curriculum topics, it, it shows the units. Let me uh, look for another one. So um, an another thing that was also like very interesting for us when we were working on this particular project in Ghana. So uh, there are like certain part of Ghana which are still not connected through the internet or even when you, the school systems are not well connected through the internet. And you know, like, uh, uh, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa or in even Francophonic Africa, the offline education through Wikipedia is a very famous project. So they use Wikifundi in the Francophonic countries and they use Qwix in the Sub-Saharan African countries to you know, download Wikipedia articles in those devices and take, take them to the schools and let uh, students know about like, how they can access Wikipedia, how they can read through Wikipedia and structures of Wikipedia. So I was attending uh, uh, Wiki in Daba, which is the African conference uh, last year. And there was a presentation about QX that our partner, Open Foundation West Africa, was presenting. And uh, she mentioned that how it is a bit challenging, uh, you know, in terms of like curating a list. So let's say, you know, I am going to a school uh, in, in, in some part of like Ghana uh, and I'm doing this workshop for like eighth graders 
and I don't know actually like which are the articles that I should download, right? I cannot just like download random articles, you know, which are not even like relevant to their school curriculum or not even something that they're reading about. But imagine this particular, you know, infrastructure that we are building with could also help you, you know, like curate a list, download these articles that are relevant by the school uh, school grade or by the, for the students. So yeah, I think this is more like a bigger structure. This is actually a list of all the curriculum topics that uh, appear in the in the curriculum for Uruguay that we digitalized. That was the curriculum of the mandatory subjects from seventh grade to ninth grade. That uh, when kids are around uh, eleven and no twelve and fifteen years old, typically, and now we have them uh, in in Wikidata. And I think it would be a good idea like to show them the visualization, the dashboard now? Yeah. Okay. It's just one minute, I don't even have to go, but you can show the dashboard. Okay. Yeah, and if you have like questions, we are doing like a workshop uh, later in the day, uh, so you can join us. So this involves like a lot of steps actually, like once we uh, have the curriculum documents, because you know, now you have to like manually get the data and so, we use the model that has been created and we capture the data manually using that model. So we bring it to like a spreadsheet and from the spreadsheet we use like OpenRefine. Uh, so yay, OpenRefine. So OpenRefine to, you know, like structure this data on Wikidata. And then, you know, like some cleaning and so as, as, as a normal, you know, database that works. Um, so yeah, that is something that we are doing. One of the challenges that could come up in the future as well is like how to keep this data updated. You know, like we need a community of practice to, you know, like to work on, the, who, are, who have like interested to work on curricula, to have like a team, to have a group, to even like, you know, identify some core principles or core agreements on like what, what are the kind of data we should have, what are the granularity of data that we should go with. So this is why we are here, you know, to talk to you, to learn more from your work and you know, another thing that, do you want to show the, yeah. So another thing that we also wanted to bring here was to see like how this data could be further used, you know? Like, um, I know that sometimes the, the teachers have to create their own lesson plans, and when they create their lesson plans, they use like pictures, and oftentimes finding a good picture is like very difficult. But imagine if a GLAM collection or GLAM database could also be like linked with the curric curricular database, right? So you know like this particular picture is needed for like this particular curriculum topic, something like that. Or this particular book is something that you're reading for, um, uh, this particular grade and linking it with the Wikisource, if it's available on Wikisource, or it is like available on, on another database, so or library database. So, yeah, that's what I'm ending. And Nat will show the uh, dashboard that we have created, and we'll. Well, uh, this uh, from now on, it's kind of like publicity for the session that we will have uh, at uh, 4 p.m. That I've been talking to some of you, like into trying to to come to get you to come here. Uh, um, we found uh, actually part of uh, my role as a fellow in Wikidata and Open Data, the reason why I exist here, was like to uh, bring this project, this visualization into Uruguay. It was a project that was started, um, e the visualization that we are seeing here, it's originally implemented by um, Wikimedia Italy. They made a project called Wikipedia and Scuola Italiana that shows what you're seeing here. Uh, it shows uh, different metrics on uh, Wikipedia articles that are related uh, to the school curriculum. The thing is that uh, when they built it, um, they uh, just used a list, like kind of a uh, three star, uh, open open data um, database. Like they use a list of curriculum topics and then made the the um, the calls to the APIs to the Wikipedia APIs and then built this this dashboard. The dashboard, like you can, if if you enter uh, to the website wikicurricula.wikimedistas.ui. Uh, you will see that below it has some instructions on how to read the visualization. And um, I think that the in innovation that uh, we did here in Uruguay was to uh, be able to connect this project, this visualization, to Wikidata for Education. Instead 
of being um, a visualization that is built on a list, on a CSV of uh, article names. Now uh, this visualization is reading the curriculum from Wikidata. And since that happened, now we have the curriculum, the curriculum data structure in, in the three countries, in Italy, in Uruguay, and in Ghana. And also we have the visualization built for these three countries as well. So I think it's a, it's a good job that we've done. And we have the opportunity since uh, we have, um, we're going to, to have an intern from an outreach uh, program. We are going to have um, another development phase on this. Uh, there, there will be one person dedicated to, deve to keep developing this feature, and that's the reason that I, want, uh, I would like um, the, one, those of you who are interested in this, this project to come back to this same room at 4 p.m. to help us figure out uh, which are the best features that we can build uh, for this tool to help you work uh, as community organizers in Wikimedia movement, as editors, as uh, librarians, like whatever your, your field of interest is. If you think that a curriculum data and a visualization built on that can help you with your tasks, we want to know uh, what features would you like to see there. Yeah. And I think, yeah. So one of the interesting things that you can also see that the bubbles that you are, the bubbles that you are seeing, you can see like what are the, some of the curriculum, article, curriculum topics which are like have such good page views. And you know, these are the topics that we probably have. And some do not have good page views or do not have good uh, articles uh, like in them, uh, are not good articles. So you can also like improve these through that. So, but yeah, like Nat said, we will look forward to like have you to like, you know, do some like design research. That's too much maybe, yeah, but, but yeah, but to see like how can we make it better? Um, uh, how can it will make your life easier as an educator, as a glam expert, and to make sure like you have access to these data, to, to download it, to make use of something around it. So, yep, that's all, Nat. You know. That's all. Yeah, I just want to emphasize, I don't know if we said uh, that like with emphasis already, that the model that Tsukaina built is actually pretty flexible, like it's not implemented, it's not uh, it, it's not complete in, in Uruguay because I, I missed some parts like the learning objectives, I was like, that this is too much for the, for this stage, and in Italy it's also missing some other information, but it's a very flexible model, and it helps you query uh, data based on the ISCD <laughs> code that uh, UNESCO uses. It also allows you. I, I do, it may allow you to do queries like uh, based on the on the age of the person who is supposed to be coursing that that grade or on the learning objectives. So you have a lot of uh, flexibility and that the model is very powerful for us to put in there like the information that, that we have about school curriculums and build many things on top of that. Yeah. That is one of the use cases that we want to work on. Like you know, there are certain there are certain countries where the curriculum does not change for like ten years or twenty years, and there are like certain uh, certain countries where curriculum changes, where there is a re regime change. You know, so in in each curriculum topics, when you have like, can you, can we open like one of the Wikidata I like an item? You know. Uh, so e e each uh, grade has like let's say 15 curriculum topics and you can manage it by uh, a timeline so you can say like this this was part of this grades curriculum topic from November 2006 to December 2009 something like that and some changes that was made so you can also like make a you know comparison that okay when there was a liberal party in the power this was the curriculum when there was like a you know Let's not say it, but party in the power. This this is how the curriculum was changed. So yeah, you can do that. I mean, we still have to figure out the power that comes with the model, the power that comes with Wikidata. But we we can definitely uh, make make sure that you know all these things are uh, added to it. Yeah.
the parts is the basic education plan. That's the education that is uh, meant to be for children from from preschool. I cannot do it like with my left hand. Uh, um, from preschool to to 15 years old, more or less. Then, if you start navigating this, uh, you find the different stages of the of the um, of the of the program, and if you keep digging, you will find uh, like this. For example, we have here the seventh grade and the eighth grade. And we will have here uh, all the units. And within the units, we have finally the curriculum topics that we are talking about. Well, these are these are the units and within the units are the, are the curriculum topics that, as you know, are linked to uh, Wikipedia articles and commons categories and such. And yeah. The Wikidata item, uh, it's a Marco Curricular Nacional in Spanish. Spanish is okay? Okay. And also, um, yeah, okay. That uh, if, if we were to map a future uh, curriculum or a past curriculum, what we would do is we would have uh, another uh, curriculum, uh, another item created. Instead of Marco Curricular Nacional, we would create another curriculum item and then do the whole mapping again. And with that, you could query like the topics within one uh, curriculum and within the other curriculum. No, I, I, I thought like we only had like 30 minutes. So yeah. But we can go for like more questions. Yeah? focus group with that like uh, with teachers I, I didn't have time uh, actually but we are also finding out st uh, st still uh, that, that's what I think I'm, I think I, we are still finding out who is our end user for this mainly because it looks like it may may be teachers but teachers uh, already know the, the curriculum in a way or they are already used to working with those PDFs I think the end user may also be other people that we have not yet identified, like developers trying to create things, or maybe activists trying to create open educational resources, Wikipedia editors, I think it's a good um, end user. But yeah, I, I would also like to, to make another, an, another group, another thing like we will do with you today, uh, with teachers to see if they find it useful at all, or what do they need to, for us to build on top of that. Thank you so much for this. I, I am so ins inspired. Um, one thing you had mentioned was how um, there, you know, there are a number of different efforts that take um, the educational resources offline for low or no bandwidth um, communities in yeah. sub-Saharan Africa. I know uh, Learning Equality does so much of this. They're so wonderful. And I just read that they are, um, they're looking for, um, I think, collaborators for some I, so okay, I was wondering if you if you were in touch with them and if there was any possibility to, to collaborate. I know they're working on. I'll, I'll be happy to answer. So I, I know I don't know like if uh, I probably share the report that they have recently published, which is like so amazing. Uh, they have created this tool that could make your life easier if you're like trying to uh, digitize curriculum because it's kind it it kind of like an OCR that they have developed, which will. You don't have to do anything like manually anymore. You just scan the PD, uh, curriculum PDF, and it creates the structure for you with their OCR. Um, yeah, I mean, in the in the long run, you know, the, these are like the partners that we definitely want to like focus on and, and work with. Uh, but yes, we are very much aware of it. And when they when they had like initially started their own project, uh, uh, one of the member from Learning Equality was was an advisor to this project, Ivan. Um, but Ben, do you not add anything here? With the learning quality, no, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the long run, that we definitely look for them as a partner to like see how can we complement each other's work, you know. Uh, and one thing, I, we we actually had a call with uh, Jamie from Learning Equality like a few weeks back. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think you you mentioned uh, that the the end user. But uh, also, 
we've been talking about uh, in Argentina, you have an, a national curriculum, and then you have a different state curriculum. So, it, it, so maybe the the national curriculum is easy or quite easy to find, but the state curriculums are really hard to find, and I think that. Uh, if you make an, an ally, alliance uh, between different uh, actors inside the educational system, maybe it's not the end user, but it's the very important uh, person in, in, inside the collaboration. So you, you can you, so you, you can uh, work with every community from from different places. I think. It's, it's not a, a question, but it's, it's, it's a comment. I have two questions. First of all, uh, can you tell me what were the challenges when you were doing this project? What were the challenges? And second thing, when you add the s items and statements into Wikidata, uh, how was the process for the properties? like? Did you, uh, will the Wikimedia community approve all the properties what you wish to include? First question was, what are the challenges? To me, in particular, the biggest challenge uh, was understanding the curriculum, actually, because uh, I, I'm close to the education, the education community, but I'm, I'm, I'm like, if some things are hard to understand, or at least to me, like when you uh, read the school curriculum, there are things that teachers uh, themselves know, and that people outside uh, that ecosystem, well, they, they study to be teachers, so it makes sense. But some things are, are kind of os obscure, like to me at least trying to, to parse into a, into a spreadsheet the, the, the curriculum for, for example, music or art, uh, to me it was, it was quite hard to, to understand. So that was a challenge. Uh, I think a challenge is like to get involved the, the authorities in this, because if they had to produce the PDF and at the same time produce a simple list like this, that this wouldn't be a challenge, but like we have to, to convert that information. So, and another challenge is like at this moment for us to build a community around this and help people to um, be um, wanting, willing to collaborate in the project and keep expanding the, the curriculum uh, to other countries or to other grades and so on. And about the approving of the properties, I think you were um, there <laughs> and I wasn't, I came uh, later to the project. Yeah, I mean, for us, like when we were working in Ghana, it was just the beginning. So, you know, for us to live in like sc scanning the, sorry, uh, getting the data out of the digitized PDF was a challenge, you know. But I don't think you had that much of a challenge with doing that. Or well, did you have that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but one of the challenges we did have is like, you know, getting the properties that we require for the project to be approved by the Wikidata community. So we definitely needed like more engagement, more participation, and you know, have that buy-in from the community that you know this is something that we are working on is like relevant, not just for the Wikimedia ecosystem, but like beyond that, you know. So I mean, it's it's very unfortunate to say that that you know education being one of the core of our life, uh, the data is not like you you don't find like structured data on education like you know that much as you find like you know structured data in like other projects. So um, yeah, I mean, the, I, 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 find, I find this initiative like so inspiring in a way that you can do so much like study, so much comparison. You can see like how much a, how much a country's curriculum is like they're studying about like decolonization or they're studying about like climate change because of the curriculum topics that you can you know, compare with it. So this is something that gives the power of it, but you know, we have to build that buy-in within the Wikidata community that, hey, Let's do it together, you know? So, uh, and again, um, this is a call for action within this group that let's do it together. You know, we have to make a lot more changes. We have to see like, what are the gaps that ha we have and how to fill it in, how we like expand it to other countries, how different it is. So we need all your brains and ideas and thoughts to like, you know, work on that. Um, you had a second question, right? No, 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 no. Both are good, okay. I think that, right? That's the last question that we 
Oh, you are, oh. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for being here.